In this lesson, we're going to take a look at how we factor polynomials using synthetic division. And just recall that, you know, a polynomial is built up by sometimes multiplying multiple monomials together or binomials together in order to construct it. So one of the first things that I, I typically look at when I start factoring a polynomial is the, the last term of the polynomial that does not have a variable attached to it. So what I do is I, I go back and I, I do some prime factorization of that number. So I'm going to take 50, and if you remember back from your middle school or elementary school years, we would break this down into those prime factors. So 50 is divisible by 2, so this would be 2 times 25. And then I'd break down 25 into 5 times 5. And if I bring this down, this 50 is equal to 2 times 5 times 5. So this is the prime factorization. The other thing that we can't forget also is we can also have 1 as a factor. So if we multiply this whole thing by 1, that's also one of those other prime factors that we may have to look at. And since this has pluses or minuses throughout the polynomial, we, we have to look at both the positive and negative values of those, those factors. So we have a possibility of a positive or negative 1, a positive or negative 2, and then a positive or negative 5. And you'll see what I'm talking about once we get through and start working through this. So with synthetic division, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to take a guess at what um, one of these factors might be. And let's start off with uh, just looking at x minus 1 as possibly one of our factors for this. So when I do synthetic division, I'm going to say, well, i got to look at the positive value of that. I, I have to use the opposite of what I have there. So the positive value of x minus 1. So I'm looking at that last term and I'm saying, okay, positive 1. And then I have to look at all the coefficients that are here in this original polynomial, which those would be 1, negative 1, negative 27, 25, and 50. And what I'm basically going to do is I'm going to do basic arithmetic to help me figure this out. And then at the very end, if there is a zero at the end or a remainder, that's going to tell me whether or not this is a factor of that polynomial. So the first thing I do is this very first term, I bring this down. So bring down the 1. And then I go 1, which is in this box, times 1 is 1. So I put that right here. I bring that down. And when I add these two terms together, negative 1 and 1, this is 0. Then the next one, 1 times 0 is 0. And then negative 27 plus 0 is negative 27. And then 1 times negative 27 is negative 27. And then I add these two terms together. 25 plus negative 27 is negative 2. And now I multiply this 1 over here times the negative 2, and that's still going to be negative 2. And then 50 minus 2 is going to be positive 48. Now the fact that I'm left with a, a value other than zero here in this last place tells me that I do not, this is not a factor of this polynomial. So that eliminates one of those. And I know it can be kind of tedious, but we can do this pretty quickly and eliminate some of those factors in a relatively quick uh, fashion. So the next, the next number that I'm going to look at is x plus one, or the next factor that I'm gonna look at is that factor of x plus one. So x plus one. I'm just going to go through one at a time. So when I write this down in that little box, this is going to come down as negative one. So I take this and I do the opposite sign of it. And that's, a, that's our factor that we're checking. And then I'm going to bring down the coefficients again. One, negative one, negative 27, 25, and 50. And again, I'll, I'll draw my bar down here. And then first thing, this very first number we're going to bring down. So one comes straight down. Then we're going to multiply by this this uh, possible factor right here. Negative 1 times 1 is negative 1. Negative 1 plus negative 1 is negative 2. Negative 1 times negative 2 is positive 2. And then negative 27 plus positive 2 is negative 25. Negative 1 times negative 25 is positive 25. We add those terms together and that's 50. Negative 1 times positive 50 is going to be negative 50. And then when we add these terms together, that's zero. Now, the fact that I ended with a zero here tells me that that's a factor of this polynomial. So we know that it's going to be x plus one times what's left over. Now, if we factor out an x plus one, remember that reduces our, our power of our, our, leading or our leading term of that polynomial by one. So this is going to be 
these things right here, down here, the 1, negative 2, negative 25, 50, and 0, rep represent those, um, those coefficients of the polynomial. So when I, when I bring those in, this is going to be 1 times x cubed. I reduce the power by 1, minus 2 times x squared, minus 25 times x, plus 50 is our last term, and then the 0 we just kind of ignore. Or you can look at it as 50 plus 0 is still just 50. So this is what our new polynomial looks like. Now we're ready for our next step, okay? We're not done factoring this polynomial because it's not completely factored. So our next step is to look at one of those other terms, okay? So, for example, the 2, we'll say let's look at x minus 2 first. So x minus 2, and when we look at this, we're going to bring that down. It's going to be positive when we go through and look at it. And this time we're going to look at the terms, the coefficients from this part of the polynomial because we're just trying to factor the rest of this now. We have 1, we have negative 2, we have negative 25, and we have positive 50. We're, we're down to four terms that we're looking at. And when we factor this one, we're going to bring down the 1 first of all. And then we're going to go 2 times that 1, which is 2. Negative 2 and positive 2 added together is 0. 2 times 0 is 0. So we're going to bring down that negative 25. Negative 25 plus 0 is negative 25. 2 times negative 25 is negative 50. And then we add these two terms together, and that is 0. So you can see we end in a 0 again, so that means that x minus 2 is a factor. So I'm going to rewrite my polynomial, and I'm going to say x plus 1 times x minus 2. That's my new, my new factor now. And then I'm left over inside. Remember, this, is the, this 1 represents the coefficient of the x squared term. This 0 repre represents that coefficient of the x term, and that negative 25 represents um, the, last, uh, the last term in that monomial, or that, po that binomial. So I'm going to have x squared, and 0 times x is going to be 0, so I'll ignore that, minus 25. All right, so we have our, our, our factoring almost done. And we could do this one more time, and you notice this x squared minus 25, this actually is the difference of squares. So we could, we, could, we could look at that and figure it out if we know what those are, or we can go through and we can use this process one more time. So now what I want to do, like I said, is I want to look at this, this factor right here, or this, this part of the polynomial right there. And this is where we have to be careful. We're going to look at x minus 5. So I'm looking at a positive 5 for what I, I bring down for the synthetic division. And then the, x, the coefficient on the x squared term is 1. We have to bring down the coefficient on the x term, which happens to be 0. And then we have to bring the coefficient down of the last term, which is negative 25. All right, first term we bring down, that is just 1. 5 times 1 is 5. 0 plus 5 is a positive 5. 5 times a positive 5 is going to be positive 25, and we're left with 0. So again, this is a factor of that um, polynomial right there. So now we can, we can expand this and write it. We can say x plus 1 times x minus 2 times x minus 5 times what's left over. All right, remember we reduce our our power by 1, so instead of an x squared, which we had up here, it becomes x, and this is going to be x plus 5, or 1 times x plus 5, which is x plus 5. And I'm getting that from those values that are right down there. So now we have our, our polynomial factored into those, those uh, four binomials right there, and now if we, we happen to be solving this for um, when it crosses the x-axis, finding those roots of that polynomial, we can do that really easy. We just set it equal to zero from here and we can solve that. So this is how we factor um, a polynomial that has an order higher than two or three. And we can use this for, for quadratics and other stuff as well. But this is just a, a real quick, easy way to look at this and go through and, and factor those polynomials.